All right, welcome everyone to our first community discussion about the Carpentries Incubator. I know that some of you are here uh, for checkout and happen to just have stumbled across this uh, themed discussion. So I hope that uh, it's interesting to you. I hope you learned something. I will go ahead and share my slides. Just a moment here. I have a few prepared slides. I will try to keep this to um, 15 minutes or under, so we have time for discussion and to hear from some of our uh, lesson authors who are currently hosted in the incubator. Uh, Francois, I know you're note taking. Do you mind also uh, timekeeping as well? Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open my my slides. If you want to follow along um, and click on the links, they are on line 86 of the Etherpad. And I'll be sharing my screen here as soon as I get them started. Uh, and if you're not super familiar with Zoom, please do be aware that I can't see um, everybody uh, and the chat as I'm presenting slides. So if you have a question or a comment, um, please go ahead and jump in. Uh, and Francois, if you also could keep a hand out, or keep an eye out for hands, that would be greatly appreciated. Yep, no problem. Okay, let's see here. Okay, can everyone see my slides? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. And um, okay, here we go. So the Carpentries Incubator. Today is the 25th or 26th of September, depending on where you are in the world. All right, so why do we have the Carpentries Incubator and what is it? I will start uh, with kind of the problem statement. Uh, so we have, if you've been around in the Carpenters community for any length of time whatsoever, you are aware that we have a lot of enthusiasm in this community for creating uh, and teaching new lessons on any topic imaginable. So we hear a lot of the time uh, that people want to use the Carpenters approach to developing materials and teaching um, to teach anything from computational musicology to machine learning, to natural language processing. Um, and I've only put a few examples on here. We actually have many, many more examples uh, than this. So it's really fantastic and exciting that people want to use the Carpenter's approach to teaching. Uh, we happen to think it's a very good approach and are really excited that people want to use it outside of Carpenter's workshops. Uh, and also that people want to share the materials openly with others in uh, the Carpentries community and with the broader open source, open science, open education community. Uh, so those are both really, really positive things. And we call this in, um, at least in the staff side of the Carpentries, we refer to something that we call chopportunities, which are challenges that are also opportunities. So our challenges here, which are also opportunities, are making sure that all of the materials that people want to share are findable and discoverable. So if we have 100 lessons on different topics, how do people find the ones that they're looking for? How do they know um, what's available to teach? Uh, and also, how do they know which of those 100 plus lessons are ready to teach versus in early stages in development. Um, so we have, as people are developing materials, they can be anywhere from in the very early conceptual phase to having been taught dozens of times and ready for, for broad teaching by the community. Um, and thirdly, we have um, a challenge in making sure that the quality of the materials that are being provided uh, are communicated uh, to the people who are trying to use it. So do we have some sort of a rating system or some sort of a review system uh, to make sure that when somebody goes to teach uh, these materials that they know everything's going to work as expected? So um, seeing these as opportunities, we have decided to take a twofold approach. Um, 
using the Carpentries Incubator, which I'll be focusing on today, and our second stage of implementation, which will be called Carpentries Lab, which I will briefly touch on as well. So I think, yes, this is my differences and similarities between the incubator and the lab slide. Okay, so the Carpentries Incubator, what is it? Carpentries Incubator is a low um, barrier place to share lessons in all stages of development from conceptual to ready to teach. In the incubator, there are no requirements as to the type of content that the lesson teaches or the subject or domain material that it covers. Uh, the completeness level or level of teachability that the materials are in or the stability and uh, maintenance level of the materials. So in the incubator, anyone can host any lesson uh, that they've put together that meets just three requirements that I will talk about on the next slide. So we're seeing the incubator as a low barrier place to share lessons in all stages of development uh, and to have a collaborative place to, to work on those lessons together. And we're distinguishing that from uh, what we're calling the Carpentries Lab, which will be a place for um, sharing high quality peer reviewed lessons that have gone through a review process and therefore carry the Carpentries stamp of approval, um, which indicates that they've been vetted by the Carpentries community and are known to be high quality and meet our uh, standards for, for lessons and for the way the material is presented. Uh, so we are currently in the process of developing a review process for Carpentries Lab, as well as some of the technology that will support it. I'll talk just a little bit at the end of my 15 minutes about where we are with that, but we are not uh, yet accepting any lesson submissions to the Carpentries Lab. Uh, we are directing all submissions to the incubator until we have had um, the time and space uh, to develop the, the community infrastructure and the technological infrastructure behind uh, supporting lessons in the lab. So I touched on this briefly. Uh, the Carpentries Incubator is a collaborative development space uh, that is meant to provide easy access to sharing lesson materials. We don't want people to have to go through a lengthy review process in order to be able to share their materials with the community, especially if they're not interested in kind of the, um, the carpentry stamp of approval and the stability uh, requirements that will be part of the Carpentries Lab. We want people to be able to say, hey, I developed this lesson on um, how to write shiny apps. I wanna share it with whoever wants to use it, but I don't wanna to have to go through any sort of lengthy process for that. And so we wanna provide this um, place for people to share the materials at any stage in development, um, provided that they uh, meet some kind of bare bones requirements. Uh, and we also want the community who's using the incubator to know that the materials that are in there fall within the Carpentries philosophy, values and our code of conduct. Should I come back to this slide in just a moment? Right, okay. So uh, the three requirements that I alluded to earlier, uh, how, do, how to get your lesson into the incubator. If you have materials in really any stage of development uh, from conceptual to complete, uh, there are only three requirements for having your lesson hosted in the incubator. The first is that um, it must conform to the Carpentries Code of Conduct. Uh, so as a community, we take our Code of Conduct very seriously uh, as kind of the foundational bedrock of what enables us to continue to provide a welcoming um, culture uh, to people from all walks of life uh, in our in our community. So uh, if you're not familiar with the code of conduct, please read it uh, and you can then certify that your materials 
abide by the code of conduct. The second requirement uh, is that your lesson use some version of the Carpentries lesson template. Uh, so this lesson template provides the, uh, the styling and the technological um, setup for all of our lessons to provide a kind of standard look and feel. Uh, and it's gone through several iterations uh, and it continues to be updated. So for the purposes of getting your materials into the incubator, we do not require that you have the latest version of the lesson template, um, but we do require that you have some version of the lesson template so that we can work with you on updating to the most recent version. Uh, and the third and final requirement of having your lesson hosted in the incubator is that you have either a CC BY or a CC ZERO license um, associated with your lesson or that you agree to have it licensed uh, with one of those licenses. Uh, if you're not familiar with Creative Commons licenses, um, the CC BY license is a a uh, license that says anyone can do anything uh, they want with your lesson materials, including for, um, for commercial purposes, including um, creating alterations uh, and adaptations of the material, provided that they cite the original source material. Uh, and the CC0 license does not have a requirement for citing the original source material. All of the Carpentries official lessons have a CC BY license associated with them, and uh, many of our data sets that we use in our lessons are licensed with CC0. So if you have any questions about licenses, we can discuss that during the discussion section of, of this community call. Um, or you can also uh, get in touch with myself or Francois and I will make sure to put our, our email addresses on the Etherpad as well. Ah, so I said I was going to go back to uh, what is in the incubator now. So the authors of some of these lessons are here at our community call and we'll be introducing their lessons um, in a little bit more detail once I'm done talking. Um, but I wanted to give an overview um, a preview of what's in the incubator now. Uh, we have some really exciting stuff in there. Um, packaging and publishing with Python, reproducible computational environments using containers, so that's a Docker lesson. Interactive maps in the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we've got um, uh, learn deep learning with Python. I don't even really know what that means, but uh, it must be really deep. Uh, and then we've got introductions to the Internet of Things. We've got Git using RStudio, and there are several other lessons that are in early development um, that are hosted in the incubator now. I believe I have just maybe a couple more slides, and then I'll open up the floor for discussion uh, and questions. Um, so I talked about the requirements for having your lesson hosted in the Carpentries incubator, uh, but I didn't really talk about the process of getting your lessons into the incubator. Uh, so I wanted to touch on that now. The first step uh, for having your lesson considered for the Carpentries incubator is to open an issue in the incubator repo. At that point, the Carpentries staff team, which is um, the curriculum staff team, which is myself and Francois, will direct you into one of three tracks. Uh, the first track we're calling the official track. Uh, so this is for lessons that the Carpentries has already committed to developing a lesson on. Um, this is usually related to grants. Um, so if we've committed to developing a lesson on the topic, uh, you will develop that lesson with the curriculum team and it'll be released as an official lesson that probably doesn't apply to most of the people here. Uh, so what is more likely to apply is what we're calling the community track. So if your lesson is of general interest to the community, you can then develop or transfer your materials into the Carpentries Incubator. Um, and if that lesson then develops into high quality content with a strong community of contributors, uh, it can be considered for releasing as an official lesson. Um, and if not, uh, it 
can stay in, in the incubator and, and be used by the community as well. And then lastly, we have the Carpentries Lab track, um, which will undergo an additional step of review by community members um, and have um, some additional opportunities for, for publication of materials with the Journal of Open Science, Edu Journal of Open Source Education. So the short version of that slide is um, that all you need to do to get your lesson into the incubator is to open an issue on the incubator proposals repository. I've put a link here to the issue, um, new issue template. Uh, there are some questions for you to answer in the issue template uh, that will help us, help Francois and myself, know what the next step is for your lesson, whether that's creating um, repository for you, transferring your materials from an existing repository, um, or it's some other step in the process. And we will take a look at your issue and let you know what the next step is towards having your materials hosted in the incubator. Uh, I'll briefly address a couple of frequently asked questions uh, that people have asked with respect to getting stuff uh, hosted in, in the incubator. Um, first, who owns my materials? You do. Uh, so you will have the license, which is, um, as I mentioned, uh, likely CCBY. Uh, that will, you will retain the license to those materials um, and have whatever rights that license, um, uh, sorry, I'm missing a word here. Whatever rights that license uh, keeps for you to the materials. Uh, and then the other question that we get very frequently is, does it need to use the current template and be kept up to date and have active maintainers, et cetera? Um, so the answer to all of those is no. Uh, we want to provide a easy access, low barrier access place for people to share lessons. Um, and so it does not have any specific requirements that you keep the materials up to date, um, have it actively maintained. Uh, Etc. We still want you to be able to share your materials with the community, even if you don't have the time and energy to continue to maintain those materials actively. Um, one resource that I will mention with respect to putting together your materials, if you're in the process of developing or thinking about developing a lesson that you want to have hosted in the incubator, um, Francois and I have been working on putting together a curriculum development handbook, um, which helps guide authors through the lesson development process from the first stage of conceptualization of the lesson through having uh, an actual published lesson available. Um, so the Link to the curriculum development handbook is um, live on this slide, which you can access through the etherpad. Uh, and to give a brief overview of what you'll find there, um, you'll have an overview of the carpentry's mindset around lesson design, the structure of how we, we put together our curricula, what all the pieces are called. And then we'll go through the backwards design process that we use for developing lessons uh, step by step, starting with how do you decide what to teach, uh, and moving through designing exercises and developing content for the lessons. Also get into a lot of depth about the different roles that community members play in the different stages of the lesson development process. Talk about maintainers, curriculum advisors, um, instructors and, and how all of those people play different roles in the lesson development. We'll also share uh, the lesson life cycle, um, which is kind of a rough timeline for thinking about how the lesson goes from conceptual to publication. And last but not least, uh, for any of you who are um, not as familiar or comfortable as working with uh, Git and GitHub, we do have in this curriculum development handbook uh, uh, introductions to the technology uh, for working with our lesson infrastructure. 
this is very much still a work in progress. Um, so please, we encourage you to please use it and offer feedback. Um, and we do welcome issues to, to the GitHub repository that that lesson, that the handbook is hosted in. Okay, um, I think I'm winding down here. So what's next? Uh, the very next thing that Francois and I are working on is having a web page listing all of the incubator hosted lessons. Uh, we're hoping to launch that early October 2019. We're just working on a little bit of the technological back end um, and we'll be working with the individual lesson authors uh, to get your lesson um, up on that page. We'd like to announce that we have new funding coming in to support the development of the Carpentries Lab, both on the community aspects and the technology aspects. Um, so if you're interested in helping work on that, uh, please keep your eyes out for job postings in early 2020. And in the meantime, uh, we hope that you will continue to share your lessons on the incubator. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna open it up to community discussion. Um, some of the guiding questions I've posted here are what do you want to gain from being part of the incubator? What parts of the process have been difficult or unclear? Uh, and what kinds of support uh, from either a technological background or a community aspect? Um, what kinds of features or workflow do you want to have to make sure that the lessons that are hosted in the incubator are maintainable and can grow and get support from the community? So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and open the floor up for discussion. Thank you. Oh, sorry, for those of you who are new to this format, if you have a question or a comment, you can type the word hand into the chat box and then we'll take questions and comments. Teresa. Hi, uh, yeah, I was just wondering, is there a list of the lessons that Carpentries is committed to developing? Or is that more? Great like question. Um, there isn't one that I can, that is like in a single place. If you go to the, um, the Carpentries lesson programs, pages, which I can add to the Etherpad, you'll see information about lessons in development. Um, and so those are kind of the things that we've, that we have current commitments to. I can tell you for data carpentry, that's um, right now an economics workshop and an image analysis workshop. And also we're in very, very early stages of uh, chemistry, uh, data carpentry. Uh, and then library carpentry also has some um, lessons that are listed on their lessons page as in early development. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Okay, for a little bit more um, back and forth, on this and then we'll go into some of the presentations or introductions from the lesson authors. Okay, not seeing any more hands. We will move into uh, some of the lesson introductions, uh, starting with Sarah. Take it away, Sarah. Hi, uh, so I'm working on the re reproducible computational environments using containers lessons with David Ayers. Um, it's, mo it's just using Docker's right now, or Docker images right now. Um, I'm not 100% sure what you want me to include here, but it's been 
and very interesting getting started. I put off making a Docker lesson long enough that someone else had done a nice job at starting it already. And so I built off of Dave's and he was very open to feedback. And so we started working on it together. Uh, we're really looking for people who want to run it, um, test out our lessons again and give us more feedback. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of where it is right now. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know about the Docker lesson as of yet. Thanks, Sarah. Jason? Uh, I'm just looking forward to maybe using the Docker lesson or maybe incorporating to other things. So I might be pinging you at some point next week at a hackathon. That'd be great. I know you have some Cyverse Docker lessons too. So I, um, if you have suggestions or ways we can change it, I'd be happy to hear them. Yeah, we are. So um, we are next week doing a, ha a small hackathon on reproducibility lessons. It's already in the carpentry style. So maybe um, we will submit to the incubator once we have something a little bit more substantive. Thank you, Jason. Um, any other questions or comments for Sarah about Docker lessons? Well, I was curious, what is a hackathon? Uh, for us, it, it can mean a lot of different things. <laughs> it actually means that we will, in our case, it will be a small group of people uh, we've chosen to work in Rome because uh, the environment will be nice for us there. And uh, we will be, we've assigned ourselves, uh, we've, we've developed an outline of lesson um, learning objectives and we want to develop sort of a two-day workshop so that would be done in the carpentry style so it basically lock us all in a room until we come up with stuff is our version of it thanks jason great question michael uh just a reminder to the folks in the room who are here for checkout um that we highly encourage uh, you to get involved with this discussion so that we can certify you for having participated in the discussion. Um, so hint, hint, uh, questions, comments are welcome. Um, thanks, Sarah. I think the next person who will be talking about their lesson a little bit is, um, is Ryan here, Ryan Avery? Not here. Okay, so let's go ahead to Steen. Hello. Um, for my lesson, actually, it started just because we were organizing a workshop in Belgium and we wanted to do something small on Git in our studio. And um, we just had a couple of hours. So, to fill that gap and make it still useful but not too extensive. We, just for that workshop it started, made a very small version with the scope of, I just want to keep my work in sync with repository. So we left out any kind of uh, working together stuff. And that's what we came up with. Um, and the, what, what, what was nice about it that we could integrate it because then the other workshops doing things in R, they could com we could regularly say commit and push and they understood what we were talking about. Um, so I have actually no further plans with developing it. It was useful back then. It was easy to set up in the template because you have the documentation. Um, but if anyone wants to <laughs> develop on this, uh, be very welcome. I think it's good there in the incubator. It's the right place to be. Uh, but if anyone wants to take something out of it, then just go ahead, I would say. Thank you, Steen. Um a couple of great points that you brought up there that I forgot to mention. One is that the materials that go into the incubator don't have to be any particular length. Um, so they can be anywhere from an hour, a couple of hours to a full uh, workshops worth of, of materials. So thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, and yeah, these are licensed CC BY, so feel free to use it, change it, work with it. Maybe just to mention that it was together with uh, Paula, Andrea, that well, 
to go to it alone. And actually, it's something that we were wondering, I was a bit wondering at the same time, because sometimes it's also just useful to have a very small lesson instead of always creating very large, extensive lessons. So maybe that's just, it could be an, an option, just keep the scope small, just by yeah, making it more clear. But that's something that, yeah, I'm not having a clear mind on. Thank you very much. Um, we have hands from Debbie and then Jocelyn and Hujin Wei. Hi. Um, so th I think this is a, this is a great discussion. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. Sorry, I couldn't tell. Um, and I, it's funny because I just signed up for checkout, and yet this is a, this is fabulous because I completely agree that having short lessons or things in development and having access that would be wonderful. Because I'm actually struggling with trying to figure out what to teach um, for my demo, but also in general because I'm a I'm a university staff member, and if I were to change jobs or something like that, I'd still be a staff member, and I'd be looking for much shorter workshops because it's hard to get staff out for just two days you know to take two days out of their out of their day and also I'm having some not trouble but I'm trying to figure out the best way to teach it because I wouldn't be working with coders I'd be working with people who generally work with Excel so you know and I've been looking at the lessons on offer and I've been thinking well open refine or R for social scientists um, for myself, honestly, for my demo, I'll probably do SQL for ecologists because that's my background. Um, so basically, I'm rambling. Uh, I wanted to participate in this discussion. I don't expect you guys to have answers for me, but that's, that's kind of why I'm here. And it's it's a really interesting to see that this incubators might be a place for folks like me who, who don't have a, I don't know, a, a really solid place in teaching coding, but who are interested and want to help folks that wouldn't normally be interested in it, help them to at the very least manage their data in a better way. And then staff can database things like institutional data a little bit better. Great. Thank you, Debbie. Um, I definitely think that, uh, yes, sorry, my, my cold is, is mangling my brain a little bit. Um, two things I wanted to say in response to your comment. One is, um, have you checked out the library carpentry lessons? Um, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it, do, it does seem pretty, what, well, when I looked, it seemed pretty uh, pointed to librarians, um, as opposed to, say, finance people or comms people or um, research administrators. But I can definitely take another look. I'll for sure jot that down. Yeah. Okay. Um, definitely true. They are they are appointed for library librarians and um, and archivists. Um, the most general purpose lesson that we kind of have on the data carpentry side is the the ones for ecologists. Those yeah. Are kind of our right. all purpose uh, yeah. lessons. Um, and I just wanted to for anybody in this room who's here for for checkout to point out please don't use the incubator materials for your teaching demos um, because the trainers who are running the teaching demos are not expected to be familiar with all of the new stuff that's in the incubator. Um, so please do use one of the official carpentries for your tech and your course. Looks like we lost Erin. Can you hear me now? Uh, Hello? Yeah, back. Yeah, 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 back. Can... Okay, sorry. Um, I was just trying to put in a little bit of a disclaimer um, so that people don't uh, go and, and teach Docker and um, computational musicology at the uh, teaching demos because the trainers would be um, would be pretty surprised and not really know how to how to handle uh, those lessons at this point. Um, Jasmine and then Wajin Wang. All right, great. Um, thank you for this wonderful discussion on the incubator. Um, I had a question for Steen on the the Git using RStudio um, template. I was wondering if 
could speak if you could speak to um the use of git desktop in conjunction with r studio git um because it might help beginners orient themselves better to what git is all about um i don't know if you have any comments or thoughts about git desktop in particular uh i don't have any specific um comments on using github desktop or not but i if i remember we had internally the discussion on teaching one or the other but um yeah because that workshop and also at my previous work there was really the audience was really dedicated to our studio having it in one environment seemed like an advantage except and uh, with switching between those two environments was we were thinking like mm, that makes things more difficult so that was the only reason we did it in our studio because we knew from beforehand that our audience was used to our studio. Oh, gotcha. Okay. But I do think it's it's perfectly possible to do a similar lesson with GitHub Desktop. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hua Jing and then yeah, hi. Yeah. Hi, this is Hua Jing. So I have a, a two questions, like one general question about the lab and then one specific question about the uh, Git. So, the general question I have about the, um, you know, the incubator and the lab, how do the lesson plans are going to evolve? Like, say, like, if we de start developing, like, incubator, people work on it, and then uh, those, as those mature, are you going to move uh, those modules, like, send those modules to peer review and move them into the lab? Uh, and also, like, how, like, I know there's some currently a lot of the developed lessons uh, exist. Um, on the carpentry, uh, like on the carpentries, are they going to be part of the lab? Great questions. Um, so, in terms of the incubator lessons moving into the lab, that's definitely the idea, um, and that's the the purpose of the lab is to be able to help provide that kind of peer review and um, vetting. Uh, I can't think of a, a better word right now. Vetting the lessons to make sure that they are useful to the community and high quality. Um, so once we have the Carpentries Lab uh, process set up, we'll be inviting lessons from the incubator to submit to the review process and moving through there into the lab. The lessons that are currently Carpentries official lessons will not be going into, um, into the lab. They'll be on that separate official lesson track. Okay, yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I guess my second question is more specific, uh, specifically to this uh, Git using RStudio. I think that's a great, uh, great idea to have such a lesson plan because I know like our users using RStudio, there's often there are more and more development in the reproducibility, thinking about the reproducibility and then adding a version control on top of that, I think it's just a great idea. And I guess my question is more like a comment, uh, but is there any plan to integrating some of the reproducibility component? That's for... Um, yeah. uh, from my side, there are no plans, but while I was now Googling, there is a, apparently there is a reproducible research Git other workshop as well or lesson. Mm -hmm. So apparently it already exists. Uh, but I was okay, great. <laughs> not planning to do anything in that direction for the moment. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I can give a little bit of background to that. We do have um, some lessons that have been sitting in kind of like an intermediate stage of development uh, for reproducible research uh, using R and an equivalent set of lessons using, using uh, Jupyter Notebooks with, with Python. Um, they haven't kind of reached the stage where we're able to to use them um, publicly uh, and so, um, promote their use. Uh, they're not quite at the level of teachability yet, but yes, they are in kind of intermediate levels of development. Um, so keeping an eye on the time, I know that we have uh, hands from Francois, sorry, not Francois, Francis and Amelia, um, and then Anne uh, would also be introducing her, her lessons a bit. So let's go ahead with Francis and Amelia. Hi, 
Um, I just want to say first, thanks for developing this system. It seems like a great way to get some shorter and maybe more targeted lessons um, that might be more specific for full workshops. And I apologize if I missed the answer to this because my internet has been a little bit flaking for this. Um, but I was wondering if the incubators and the lab lessons would have any roles in the official kind of two-day workshop layouts, because I was thinking it would be great if we could integrate it in and have more of maybe like a breakout session in the afternoon to get more targeted focus or learning after the intro workshops. Great question, Francis. Um, yes, absolutely. So the requirements for official carpentries workshops um, have, for each lesson program, there's a specific set of materials that need to be included in an official workshop, but there's always also room for um, additional materials, uh, like I said, breakout sessions in the afternoon, third days, um, or uh, afternoon sessions uh, to use some of these additional incubator materials um, or in-house developed stuff um, is also definitely appropriate with the official Carpentries lesson workshops. Great, thank you. Thank you. Amelia? Yeah, hi. Um, I think it's just clear that there's a lot of interest about the R Studio and Git. Um, I think that's a great lesson moving away from, you know, having to do Git commands in the terminal. Um, I was just wondering if it was at all, if there was any overlap with uh, Jenny Bryan's Happy Git with R material, because I've used that when I teach uh, Git and R Studio. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I just mentioned in the chat in the chat box that I just started from something we did already internally, which is more extensive. I was like targeted for the people at the institute itself, and we just together with the other um, teachers of that workshop, we just decided, okay, let's just focus only on that small section. So I don't know the overlap or uh, these things. Sure, great. Um, I'll take a look and maybe I can um, help contribute. I think uh, those materials are also probably CC BY licensed, so they could get kind of wrapped in too. Cool, that would be nice. Great, thank you for pointing out those materials. Um, Anne, I want to give you a chance to talk about your lessons a little bit. Yes, thank you. Um, so I put three lessons in the incubator, and the first one is a um, and Jupyter Maps. Uh, and the main idea was to fill a gap between what we are teaching in the geospatial data carpentry lesson, because we have many uh, people attending our geospatial uh, data carpentry and they don't know anything about geospatial data. So that was the main idea. And uh, ideally, I would like to have a lesson where we have R and Python, uh, two lessons of this. Uh, and that's it for that one. And the second one is also because uh, many of the researchers we have uh, here are starting um, to be willing to do like deep learning, machine learning, AI, and they don't know what they are talking about, but they really would like to learn. So we try to do something. Uh, it's not very mature yet, but um, it's a starting point. And I really would like to have uh, feedback and um, inputs on how we can improve it. And the last one is uh, on IoT, which is Internet of Things. And the, my initial idea was really, I would like to have a, an introduction on computers and parallelism using this kind of um, Arduino-like uh, technology because people can really touch it and break it and they can see the computer is not, a, um, it's not something very complex. Uh, they can have it in their hands. Uh, but I didn't get funding for this very generic topic, so I, I did something which is more in, in, in my topic, which is uh, geoscience. So we did something uh, around weather station. Uh, but I'm really hoping we can further develop this kind of lesson. And that's it. If you have any questions. Yes, there is a nice blog. You can see that. Great, thank you, Anne. Um, questions and, and comments for, for Anne? Robert? 
Uh, yeah. Hey, Ann. I'm um, really excited about the IoT uh, lesson you put together, and I was just looking at some of the details. So your so your original kind of thought was something more general, but still focused on Arduino. I was just curious if you see any kind of, I guess, branching out with uh, things like Raspberry Pis or um, other microcontrollers. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have chose, uh, chosen this uh, one of the cheapest option, mm -hmm. which was also, uh, um, and I, I'm very happy to get some input on, uh, on this because we, we would like to have something where we, we can, uh, we use it in many places, even if you don't have lots of funding. Uh, so we try to find something very cheap. But, uh, and that's, the, the microcontroller in itself it doesn't really matter for this level. Okay. So I don't Very know cool. if I answered the question. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it used, well, you said it was like special, uh, specific to your your field with the weather station due to... Uh, yeah. So I'm really hoping, if, for instance, as part of this incubator, it's more generic, for instance, and we can... Uh, okay. uh, really work on, on something uh, for a large number of people. Yeah, excellent, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, we do have a few people who are here for checkout who haven't had a chance to ask questions or offer thoughts yet, so I'd like to invite those people to, to comment. Uh, Matus and then Matt. Yes. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. Um, so first, uh, generic to the, the incubator stuff, this is absolutely amazing. So you, Erin, really answered all the questions I was left with when I, when I left the instructor course. So this is, this is super cool. So I really don't have any questions to that because all my questions were answered, really. It's amazing to, to, and it's, it's absolutely amazing to see really many lectures coming and uh, increasing the diversity of, of the Carpentries universe like this. And it's, it's really great with short life lessons as well and longer and, and everything. So this is absolutely cool. Um, and I, I very, my, very much uh, like to see all this uh, uh, starting new lessons that uh, were introduced today. They are really excellent. I agree with Anne that it's it's also, I think as well that it's the best idea to start with the, the hardware that is most accessible to everyone. So I think that that's really good. Thank you, excellent. Matt? Um, yeah, earlier you mentioned um, something about an incubator focused on chemistry. Um, and I was just wondering if I get more information about that. Um, it just seemed, um, yeah, that's just a huge field that there's a lot of potential to, to, uh, to tap into. And I know a lot of people would be interested in material like that. Yes, absolutely. So that's actually one of the lessons that we have grant applications to develop. So it will actually be on the official track. Um, and currently we're at the very beginning stages of trying to reach out to people who might want to do collaborations on developing a data carpentry lesson that is for beginners on working with um, chemistry data. So um, maybe we can get in touch if you know people who might be interested in helping develop that. I know it's a little bit different to, to develop it than to use it. Um, but yeah, that's in very, very, very early stages of development, but it will be an official an official lesson. Is there like some place I could keep an eye out for this or, um, or would this be more behind the scenes? I think that there's a mailing list. Let me see if I can find that. It hasn't been active yet, but I will try to grab that and add it to the Etherpad. Okay, thanks. Uh, Denise? Hi, yeah. Um, I was wondering sort of a more generic question about the incubator. Um, when when authors are uh, in that development process, um, are 
are they expected to sort of ask other instructors to sort of take pieces of their lessons and sort of teach through it to sort of get that feedback um, instead of you know just the lesson author doing the teaching but sort of recruiting others to um, teach pieces of it just so they can see how it how it all works out yeah excellent question Denise that's actually um, not a <coughs> excuse me not a requirement for incubator lessons but for um, lessons that are on the official track or the carpentry lab track uh, there will be requirements for um, having pilot workshops that are hosted and taught by people outside of the set of original lesson authors. And so if you're interested in seeing more about how that process works, I recommend taking a look at the curriculum development handbook. The chapter on the lesson life cycle kind of lays out the different stages of, of pilot workshops and who's involved with those. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, Matt, I just checked and there's actually not yet a mailing list for chemistry. Um, like I said, we're in very, very, very early stages of development. Um, if you shoot me an email, I can get you um, looped into conversations when they start happening. Um, I think our next step will probably be to create a mailing list. So I make sure you get on that. Okay, sounds good. Great. Um, and we're just at about the top of the hour. Um, do we have any final questions or comments, particularly questions from the folks who are here for checkout, if you have anything that wasn't answered yet. Um, I just want to say that, um, that, you know, I'm kind of new to these collaborative, you know, type of things. Um, and so it's just really interesting to see how it's set up. Um, and I don't really have much more to say, but um, I'm excited about being here and uh, eventually really contributing and being a part of this. So thank you. Great, thank you, Michael. We're excited to have you here and all of these new community members also. Thank you. Okay, all right, so I will um, wrap us up. I will be posting this recording um, within the next week uh, to our YouTube channel. Um, so you can look at, out for it there and send it to your friends who aren't able to come to the meeting. Um, there will be another one of these discussions on the incubator uh, tomorrow uh, for folks who are in Australia, New Zealand, kind of Asia time zones. Uh, and I will also include a link to the slides when I post the, the YouTube. Hi, Alex. Sorry, we're just wrapping up here. Um, I will post a, post a link to the slides also that, so that you'll have all of the, um, the links and, and resources there. So thank you everyone for joining um, and I look forward to seeing you around the community. Bye everyone. All right. Thank you. Bye. Uh, and bye then. I will bye.